To get on in the civilized world, almost everyone buries their animal nature. Not Andrew Yukos. This is how he bonds with some of the planet's most dangerous wildlife. And even his friends can't believe the risks that he runs. Oh, Andrew's completely insane. I said to him, I said, mate, just can't do it. I definitely don't think I'm crazy or, or insane. There's no one on Earth who responds to the call of the wild quite like this. In the car, in the car, in the car, in the car. Andrew grew up in the quiet suburbs of Wollongong, south of Sydney. But this city boy's a rare breed. Oh, ready to go for a walk? As his mother knows only too well. A lot of people say that he's got like um, six cents about the animals. Since childhood, Andrew has had an irresistible urge to escape suburbia. Head for the wild. And hunt animals. They're handed. There's an instinctive thing. As soon as I see an animal, I'll just not target. Take on after it. So why would Andrew want to wrestle a dangerous wild boar? Perhaps he's more in touch than most with our hairy human ancestors. Hunting is a primal human activity, a throwback to our hunter-gatherer past when we lived in a reciprocal web with animals. Modern humans have lost this relationship. And some people really come to recognize this, and they decide that they're going to reclaim that relationship. Catching animals, it's not just an obsession, it, it, it's my life. Look at him there. Aren't you just gorgeous? I feel like I was just put here to, to explore that sort of science behind animal capturing and interacting and engaging with, with, with animals. That's, that's why I'm here. Engaging done, Andrew lets his animals go. He seems to have a special chemistry with wildlife, which could be explained by exactly that. Chemistry. The Harvard biologist E.O. Wilson talks about the concept of biophilia. And biophilia is an emotional state where somebody feels intensely connected to the natural world. And this may be related to the molecule oxytocin. Sometimes called the love hormone, oxytocin is a powerful chemical that makes humans feel all warm and fuzzy. It's very possible that if he's interacting with other creatures, his body is producing oxytocin, he's feeling relaxed, he's feeling good, and he may be even feeling bonded to the creatures that he's pursuing. Andrew's not your typical hunter. For him, the thrill's in the chase and the catch, but not the kill. Ooh, this little guy. Anyone can pull a trigger and, and kill an animal. This guy here is the African rock python. My approach is more instinctive, it's more strategic. I've actually followed him, he's been stalking all the stalks. We have almost understood the personality of the animal. He's absolutely gorgeous, aren't you, mate? Yeah, he's the king snake around here. Wherever he goes, ah! whatever he tackles, Andrew captures on camera. Even if, like this disgruntled goanna, the animals are reluctant stars. Uploaded online, the footage is part of Andrew's mission to let the world know about the fabulous fangy fauna around the world and down under. Welcome to Australia. Andrew Yukels sees himself as a communicator of the natural world, a more agile version of David Attenborough. I guess part of the passion is about teaching people everything that I've taught myself over the years. I understand the animal's behaviour, I understand the environment around him, and this is exactly how I'm going to capture him. You just see the bite that he's got on my finger. And he won't let go. Andrew is studying for a master's 
in wildlife management at university in Sydney. But whenever he can, he swaps books for the bush to grapple with creatures great and small. Me and my mate Daniel, we're actually going to be going out to Ningen, which is about eight hours away, a bit of a drive, and we're going to be capturing some animals. Hi, do I say, son? Dan is Andrew's emergency services department. And the reason I go with him is someone's got to basically look after him a bit and make sure, you know, if something bites him, I can take him to hospital, so it's all right. Over 500 kilometres from the safety of suburbia, the Australian outback teams with wildlife. And it's not long before Dan spots a mob of kangaroos. Armed only with determination and a stunning turn of speed, Andrew begins his very individual style of hunting. I was always very good at cross country. I've always been a very good sprinter over short distance. But Roo's top speed at 65 kilometers per hour, way faster than any human. So how come Andrew's confident he can hunt down the hopping herbivore? We know that human hunters, as far back as 1.9 million years ago, engaged in a type of hunting called persistence hunting. And the idea here is to wear the animal down until it's exhausted and then to attack it. In a sprint, many land mammals make humans eat dust. But we evolved for the long run. We have skin, not fur, so we can sweat and cool. And our shock-absorbent legs have a high percentage of fatigue-resistant, slow-twitch muscles. The upshot? Over long distance, humans can outpace any land mammal on Earth. Or indeed, any marsupial. As soon as I start noticing the back legs buckle, I start breathing louder, put extra pressure on him, pressure on him to make a mistake. Enemy release. Andrew has his prey. And this is his version of the kill. A great big spiritual hug. I start to relax, my heartbeat relaxes. So was his, his heartbeat was slowing down and slowing down and slowing down. And right there, that's the moment, that's the connection I have. Right there. I'll just have a bit of a moment with him, and then you release him, let him go back out there. Last year, Andrew left the Australian bush for a walk on the wild side in Africa, straight into the lion's den. To demonstrate that humans can out-predate a top predator, he approached a giraffe carcass the property of two lunching lions only metres away. It seems even lions know better than to challenge a semi-naked Australian. When wingman Dan saw the footage from Andrew's solo safari, he wasn't the least bit surprised. Well, no matter how hard you tell him not to do it, he's going to go out and do it. Like, if you say, look, I think you're going to die doing it, he's like, oh, well, at least I'll die happy. It doesn't faze him. Insane. He's completely insane. Experts have a different explanation. Andrew's dangerous game is all about risk and reward. When he went out on those hunts encountering dangerous animals, he would have been, you know, basically high as a kite on adrenaline. Adrenaline provides a natural rush that some people want over and over again. It's what we psychologists call tolerance, needing more and more of activity to get those same initial mood-modifying experiences. So for me, the kind of adrenaline junkie side of it is something that is very much part of Andrew's behaviour. I guess I've had my fair share of close calls, but uh, when I'm out there, it's because I've got such a good understanding of animal behaviour. I guess I've been quite lucky so far. 
as he was with a pod of hippos. Hippos are responsible for 3,000 human fatalities every year, more than any other African mammal. And Andrew seems hell-bent on becoming a statistic. In that situation where an animal's in his element and you're out of yours, uh, it can be a little bit dangerous at times. It's the same with elephants. This six-ton bull has females to protect, and any outsider, like the wild man from Wollongong, is a threat to the herd. I knew he was dangerous, but I really wanted to show, you know, exactly how territorial these animals can be and how dangerous they can be. Mission accomplished. My heart's speeding, you know. And all I can hear in the back of my ears is the boom, 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 boom. The ground just shaking under my feet. In the car, in the car, in the car. Indisputably, Andrew Eucles plays a very, very dangerous game. Most humans have a self-preservation instinct that stops them from doing this sort of thing. Cautious people have helped us retain the gene pool, but the risk takers among us push us forward in a whole different way. Without risk takers like Andrew in our evolutionary past, humans may not have had an evolutionary future risk-taking has a lot of survival value. You had to hunt animals, you had to fight off other tribes, you had to fight off predators. So risk-taking behavior is something that we've evolved to have as part of our human repertoire. Remarkably, Andrew returned to Australia unscathed. Today, he's head down, ass up, educating Aussies about the threat from non-native species, like the fox, imported from Britain for hunting in the 1870s. Here we are, the European, the European red fox. These guys here are the biggest native killer, the biggest problem to Australia's wildlife. Seven million foxes now feast on a diet of native birds, mammals and marsupials, and they wipe out 30% of Australia's lamb population every year. To conserve Aussie animals, hunting foxes is legal on private land. And a local farmer has asked Andrew to do just that. As usual, he's got his own unique bag of tricks for the job. Roadkill Roo. He plans to outfox the fox by using this one as bait, adding his own special twist. So simply what I'll do is I'll get intestines out and I'll smear myself all over and cover my scent, just like a prey animal. The smell of intestines uh, on you is um, kind of a smell that you don't forget. Basically, you never want to stand downwind of him um, for about a week, and it's horrible. It smells like he's pooed himself. At the start, I guess it was a bit of a good idea, but as soon as that sort of intestinal fluid starts dripping into your mouth, yeah, it can be a bit disgusting. For once, Andrew comes up empty-handed. I was there for a good four hours, but um, the fox that I was after, no, nah, he wasn't coming nowhere near. It takes guts to play Andrew's dangerous games. A normal person just wouldn't do it. It's just pushing the envelope just a bit too far, but, you know, it never stops him. It's been a typical weekend in the outback for this very unusual man. Tomorrow, he goes back to university and his more conventional wildlife studies. But he'll soon be back to commune with nature and, he hopes, inspire others to follow in his footsteps. I want people to believe that anyone can do this. They can. You can do it. Anyone can do it.